Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today we are going to make something. This is a new series which I've titled Let's Make Something and my objective on the series is to uh, produce a couple of projects per month which I will uh, I'll publish on my website free for you to download and along with it I will basically uh, post some short video walking you through the entire process of uh, uh, preparing the project, sending it to the machine uh, and finally assembling it if the assembly is required. On today's video we are going to make a very simple laptop stand which I've prepared uh, on the three uh, most common laptop sizes uh, which are the 14, the 15.6 and the 17.3 inches. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, I'll now walk you through the process to prepare your files and to send them to your machine. Now, once you download the files, again, uh, there will be a link in the video description below, um, you will need to unzip the file and so depending on which size you have chosen, you will have a folder with the 14, the 15 or the 17 inches respectively. Inside of each uh, folder uh, you will find three DXF files containing the top, the side and the bracing uh, components respectively along with uh, one single light burn file with a preliminary nesting and seven G-code files in .nc code uh, one of which has the same preliminary nesting like in the light burn file and then in pairs you will have uh, the various parts in both horizontal and vertical orientation so that you can basically uh, fit your machine so according to your need. Now let's start very quickly with the light burn file. When you open the file you are presented with uh, a quick notes with instruction on what you should do but very uh, quickly let me walk you through. So here you will see I have already created uh, preliminary nesting and so this preliminary nesting might not uh, fit within your machine as you can see I have here the uh, Nejomaster 2S Plus beneath so in my case I have one more machine so I can switch to that and I'm good to go with it but in your particular case you might want to rearrange uh, the components in order to fit your machine or material if you have some piece of scrap after that you will need to set the parameters uh, to your layers now you will need to care about the black and the blue layer, the red layer is only uh, in this sample available. Uh, now they are uh, currently settled to a single pass line mode, 1000 uh, mm per minute, 100% power. So you will need to set the, them according to uh, the power characteristics of your uh, machine and the actual material that you are going to use. Obviously the material will need to remain 3 mm since the pockets they are for that thickness. Uh, in particular you'll need to pay attention to the curve. Uh, now in the blue layer I basically settled a minus 0.1 mm of curve. So this is basically going to make the pockets, these blue pockets, a little bit smaller so that they can fit nicely uh, when you assemble the uh, entire thing together. Now this is something that unfortunately you won't be able to do with the G-code files that I have generated for um, laser GRBL uh, but the 0.1 millimeter of curve it's pretty much typical for diode lasers so this should be pretty sufficient for uh, your application. If the curve applied is not sufficient so basically the, the assembly it's not perfectly uh, fitting together I'll highly recommend you any way to use some vinyl glue so that you can have a permanent uh, assembly. Alright, let me now walk you through very quickly to the um, laser GRBL files. Now as you can see here we have the preliminary nesting. Let me show you. So this is exactly the same as in the light burn file. Um, eventually you could use the various nestings. So let's say for example I can use the top in a vertical orientation to fit my machine. Now if you're following my channel uh, you should know that I have an entire series covering the 
uh, in-depth video tutorial on uh, uh, laser GRBL and you should know that you cannot basically or actually you can append G-code files in laser GRBL however um, the G-code files they retain the reference frame from the native uh, software and so you will not be able to place them where you want to create your custom nesting and so I can show you that very quickly I can for example append uh, the support let me open that up and as you can see this is automatically placed to whatever happened to be from the native file so I cannot really do nesting there um, and so you will need to basically cut the parts one by one as for the power let me close um, light burn so that I can have the port free let's connect the machine now as for the power I've uh, exported the g-code files with 100% power and a thousand millimeters per minute speed and the reason for that is because also you cannot um, set the parameters in laser GRBL for G-code files however you have an option to do overrides and so um, by giving you uh, a clean value there you can basically um, apply a percentage of that value without any math so say for instance that uh, uh, your laser uh, will need to run at uh, say 150 millimeters per minute and at a power of 90 percent so you will come over here to the power you will set that to 0.9 x the slider is very sensible uh, there we go and 0.15 x for the linear speed here there we go and so this is basically going to send all right now this is basically ready now when I'm basically launching the project to your machine this is basically going to um, override the actual parameters in the uh, cutting and since the project is only having uh, cutting lines there is no engraving there is no uh, mixing uh, you are basically uh, good to go with that once you are done with the project uh, in laser GRBL you can then reposition the top so that you can uh, personalize your uh, project by putting your logo your name or whatever you fancy in light barn instead will be fairly simple you can use the red layer that I have here off just kick off my logo there my name and just put your logo in there um, now, if you are thinking to work out the DXF files and to do some editing in Inkscape, I do not recommend to do that. And that's because Alto Inkscape, I will show you now straight away. Uh, give OK, scaling to 1. Also, uh, Inkscape actually uh, reads DXF files, actually, it's converting them. It's not retaining the original uh, dimension. So it's applying some. Uh, uh, scaling which I found being inconsistent and so as you can see here the design I think it's like 360 millimeter wide and now in Inkscape is 300 millimeters and so since this particular design it's an assembly it will be very important uh, to retain the dimension at least for the tabs and the pockets all right and this is basically how you prepare that so once you're ready you can basically launch to the machine and if your settings are right things should come off very easily and then you are uh, good to go for the assembly. Alright, once you end up with a cutting and separate everything from the main sheet, you should end up with something like this. Basically, we got here five components. Um, as a breakdown, we got one top, two sides or legs, and two bracings. Now, if the settings were right and um, if the sheet of play wood wasn't so 
badly deformed, um, you, you will end up with a very plain cut. Otherwise, you might need to intervene from the back side with a small cutter just to remove the tiny uh, you know, fibers that remain attached. But overall, it should be a pretty simple uh, job. Now, as you can see, we have some uh, uh, burning over here. You know, if you want to go ahead and clean that up, you can use some uh, um, sandpaper. Here I got uh, a 240 degree. And this should basically do the things quite right. You know, just a bit, just to remove the, the yellow. And as you can see, this is basically doing the job. Now I'll go ahead, I'll fast forward the video while I'm cleaning everything up and then we'll uh, uh, see the assembly itself. All right, so as you can see, I've cleaned all the components a little bit. Uh, if you want, you could also clean uh, over here the side. If you don't want to get dirty after that, just to remove a little bit of uh, char. For me, it's fine in this way. Now for the assembly part, that's going to be actually uh, fairly simple just get your two legs see which side you like the most I'll just push this out of the way and so I will start these are identical so this is not a problem just push them into the slot one doesn't two three four and then it's time for the top And this is done, and this is done. And as you can see, we are done. Now, if you want to, you could apply a little bit of glue here on the bottom so that it is, this is going to settle, or uh, you might want to try to tighten up a little bit uh, with a curved property in Light Barn. Now, Another thing that you could do, as you can see here, I have prepared these openings. Now, this opening will allow my laptop to uh, simply have hair coming in. But if you want to, and that's how I design it, uh, you could eventually use a pair of uh, fans. As you can see here, I have prepared already a couple of 50 millimeter fans. These are uh, medium profile, 15 millimeters height. And so you could basically stack them here with some hot glue gun and then to have your uh, basically cooling pad as well. All right, so now when installing the fans, uh, just pay attention to the direction uh, where the fan blows to. Now for this, you could plug them in and to see how they spin or otherwise you can just have a look to the uh, curvature of the blade. And so you can see that the blade is scooping in this direction. So the blade has to turn like this to push the hair downwards. And so that's the way the fan should be placed. All right. And as you can see, our thing here is just right.
All right, and as you can see, the assembly was fairly simple. If you have any idea or you would like me to design something and to post it in my website along with some uh, video tutorial or if you have um, something that you would like me to talk about or to clarify in some video, uh, feel free to comment that in the comment section below. For the time being, uh, I just received my new uh, Atom Stack P9. This will be topic for my next video. I'll open it up and I will do the setup plus initial folds and then along the way as I start experiencing the machine and the laser module I'll be able also to give you uh, an in-depth review with the good and the bad and an eventual comparison with my other two machines which are the Ofero Laser 2 and the Ninja Master 2S Plus so stay tuned if you would like to see that in my channel uh, for the time being I hope you found my video helpful I, feel, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one ciao for now